Okay, class, in this section, we will be um, working on chapter one, review of fractions, sign numbers, and order of operations. Now, this section is mostly calculator work, but we definitely need to make sure that you know how to type these in the calculator. So I'm gonna go over that. In the syllabus, it does describe which calculator it is you need. And you need the TI-30XS. So for each of these problems, I did do the problems by hand um, the way that you're supposed to do the problems by hand. Um, some of that is explained in the workbook. But my goal here in this video is to make sure that you know how to use your calculator for all these problems. <clears throat> Excuse me. The cool thing about this calculator is that when you type in your expressions, they must look exactly like they do on the paper. If what you type in here does not like look like what's on the paper, then you have not typed it in there correctly. Now, another thing I need to point out is that this is a minus sign and this is a negative symbol. There's a big difference between a minus sign and a negative. This is an operation, which means to subtract. This just means the opposite direction of a positive number. Um, so, and when I say direction, I mean on a number line. <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't know why <clears throat> my throat is so dry right now. Okay, so if I wanna type in this expression, I'm gonna type negative three, and then I'm gonna hit parentheses, negative, <clears throat> and then a fraction bar, and then eight over nine. Then you're gonna hit the right arrow, see how it's blinking with an arrow, because you need to be on the side of this fraction in order to close that parentheses. And then you can hit enter, and it tells you that the answer is eight thirds, okay? And so if you wanna verify with the steps, the hand by hand steps, you can, but this is not necessary to do on this particular section. So mostly everything in this particular section, not mostly, all of the problems in this section can be done in the calculator. So my goal is to just show you how to do them in the calculator. So for the next one, we have, um, we have negative fraction seven, over eight, go to the side, divided by negative fraction seven over eight, and go to the side. And it looks exactly like it does on my paper, so I'm gonna hit enter, and the answer is one. There's the problem written by hand, but I'm going to keep going. So now for this problem, I have negative fraction 14, over 15, um, go to the side, and this time it's plus, and fraction one over five. And go to the right. Now what's on my paper looks exactly like what's on my calculator, so I'm gonna hit enter, and the answer is negative 11 over 15. Again, I've done it by hand there, you could pause it if you want to to look that over in more in depthly, but I will continue with the next problem. So for here, I need a mixed number. <clears throat> There's a difference between a fraction that looks like this and this kind of fraction where you have a fraction part and a whole number part. That's called a mixed number. Now I've been using this button to do fractions. And if you notice right above it is the template for a mixed number. So I'm gonna hit second and the fraction button. And then I'm gonna type in my whole number eight and then two over three. <clears throat> excuse me, go to the side, type in minus, do second mixed number template again, three over one over four over. And then hit enter because it does look exactly like what's on my paper. And I end up with 65 over 12, which is exactly what we ended up with here. But on number four, it tells me to make sure that I enter my number as a mixed number, okay? So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to convert my fraction into a mixed number. Well, that is this operation right here in green. 
So it's going to take a fraction and convert it to a mixed number and vice versa, depending on what I'm starting with. But since I'm starting with this, it's going to change it to a mixed number. So I'm just going to hit second and then that button and see how it shows me. It's going to change this fraction into a mixed number. I'm going to hit enter and it does five and five twelfths. And that's exactly what the final answer is. So that one had one extra step because of the way they wanted me to type in my answer. Now for the order of operations, these also can be done in the calculator. Parentheses, fraction one over two, go to the side, minus fraction one over three, go to the side, close the parentheses, divide fraction three over four, and go to the side. Now my expression looks exactly like it does on the paper, so I'm gonna hit enter. And the answer is two nights. <clears throat> Here, we're gonna work out this problem. So parentheses, negative 0 0.9, close, plus parentheses, negative 0 0.5, close. And I get negative 1.4. Next problem, negative fraction two over three, go over plus parentheses, negative fraction one over five, close the parentheses. It looks just like it does on my paper. So I'm gonna hit enter and I get negative 13 over 15. Next problem, negative three minus parentheses, negative six, and I get positive three. Here I have negative fraction eight, over 11 minus parentheses negative fraction three over 11. <clears throat> and I get negative five over 11. Now, always when you have double signs, you wanna multiply those signs. So a negative times a negative means that sign's actually a plus or a positive. And so then I actually combine negative eight plus three, which is where the negative five comes from. That's going to be important when we get to the next section. Okay, 2.1 minus parentheses negative 2.1. Again, these two negatives would turn to a plus sign, giving me the result 4.2. Now, this next one, it's a little bit more lengthy, but we can type it all in here. and hit enter <clears throat> and it's negative 18. And then finally, this last one on this page, it's not the last problem, it's just the last one on this page. And there we go, we get negative 9.31. So there are 24 problems in this assignment. <clears throat> I'm going to continue to get to the rest of the problems. So for this next one, we're gonna hit negative fraction one over five over, this is a multiplication, so I'm gonna hit this symbol, um, parentheses, negative fraction two over three, go over to the side, close those parentheses, and then hit enter. And I get two over 15. For the next problem, it is a negative 0 0.3 times another negative 0 0.4. So negative 0 0.3 parentheses, negative 0 0.4, and we end up with the result positive 0 0.12. Next fraction, <clears throat> excuse me, next problem, division, negative fraction three over eight, and we end up with eight over 15. Now this problem is important and they give you both of these for a reason. This problem does not have parentheses around the negative one, whereas this problem does. And whether or not it has parentheses matters. You'll notice that the final answers here are completely different from one another. One is positive and one is negative. So regardless of what the problem is, you wanna make sure that you enter these things in your calculator exactly the way that they are on the paper. Don't try to shortcut 
and not write in certain parentheses when you need to be putting in those parentheses, okay? So I'm gonna put parentheses, negative one, close the parentheses, and the square button is right next to the seven. That's a square. And so I hit enter. Then the other problem doesn't have a parentheses, so it's just negative one squared. And I get negative one. And that matches the results of the actual answer, okay? But it's important that you type in these things correctly. Otherwise, you could get the wrong answers. So this order of operations is four squared minus 50 divided by five squared times seven minus two. And when I hit enter, it tells me that the answer is zero. Now there is an order of operations. It's groups first. So anything in parentheses, brackets, braces, anything inside of a radical, like a square root symbol or a cube root symbol, anything inside the absolute value bars, anything up top or below a fraction bar. All of those are grouping mechanisms. And so you would work on those groups first. <clears throat> After you've completed all your groups and there's no longer any groups, um, you would need to go to your evaluation step. Evaluation is when you're doing, you're actually evaluating the square root of numbers, taking the cube root of numbers, taking the absolute value of numbers, squaring numbers, cubing numbers, all of those kinds of evaluations. Then you can move on to multiplying and dividing, but multiplying and dividing does go from left to right. So if you happen to see a division before a multiplication, you must do that division first and then the multiplication next. And then the last step is adding and subtracting going from left to right. So you do have to do the first, pairing and then that results with the last pairing. Um, and so I have followed those directions here to get the same zero. So I'm gonna move on to the next problem. So clear that out, seven parentheses, two minus four, close. And in order to get a cube, <clears throat> there's no button on the calculator like there is for the square. It's just squares happen more often than any other exponent. So they have its own, um, key. But for any other exponent, you're going to want to use this button right here called the caret button. It looks kind of like a little hat. You're going to click on that and then it's going to lift it up so that you can type in your three exponent. <clears throat> the main difference between using this exponent key versus using the square key <clears throat> is that one, this has only a square. You can't use any other exponent. And two, when you click this, you're already ready to type in the next thing in your calculator. When you use the hat though, Anything else I type is going to be in the exponent. And we don't want this minus sign up in the exponent. So I got to get down from there. In order to do that, I'm going to have to hit the right arrow. And now I'm no longer in the exponent. And then I can hit minus six and keep working. So you definitely have to make sure you do have to come down from that exponent. Exponent three again. And then I'm going to get down. And everything in my calculator looks exactly like it does on the paper. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and I get the result of negative 8, which is the actual answer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oops. That just happened. <laughs> the camera got stuck underneath my paper, so when I picked up my paper, it just went there away. Okay, this problem is interesting because on this calculator, there are no brackets. So we don't have any bracket symbol. What you're going to use is just another set of parentheses. So every time you see a bracket or a brace or parentheses, you're going to click the parentheses. If it's opening them, you're gonna click the open. If it's closing them, then you're gonna press the close, okay? So for this particular problem, it's gonna look like two parentheses, two plus three parentheses, four minus two, close the parentheses, close the bracket. And it does look exactly like it does on the paper, except I have an extra set of parentheses instead of a bracket symbol. When I hit enter, it gives me the answer 16, which is the actual answer here. Now we're gonna move on to this problem here. <clears throat> so we have bracket or parentheses, two, 
plus three parentheses, two raised to the third, come down, minus two, close the parentheses, close the bracket, divide by 35. And we get this decimal. Now, the problem asks for a fraction. So if you do get a decimal as an answer, you can convert that to a fraction by hitting this double arrow here. This double arrow converts back and forth between decimal and fraction. So if I click it, it will bring in the fraction. If I had a fraction as an answer and I want a decimal, I would click it again and it would convert it to decimal. So I do have the same answer as we do here. <laughs> Last three problems is going to be here. So notice that in this problem, um, they have a whole fraction here. So right here, you've got this big fraction and we need to work on that. So I'm gonna type in a fraction button first. There it goes, I was waiting for it to uh, focus. I'm gonna hit the fraction first so that I could type all of the numerator and all of the denominator. And I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna hit five minus parentheses negative four and then hit enter. And it tells me that the answer is five. Now for the next one, this one is <coughs> negative three squared plus two parentheses 16 divided by parentheses three minus seven close, close. And that's it. I'm gonna hit enter and I get negative 17. Last problem is a bunch of fractions. So I'm gonna hit negative fraction four over three, go to the side, parentheses fraction one over three, close that, plus fraction five over nine, divided by fraction seven over six. And I get two over 63, which is the answer there. <clears throat> and so you can do the problems in the calculator. Again, I've done them all on hand on paper. So as you're going through this video, if you want to pause at any point in time, you can to go overlook how to do it by hand, but it's not necessary because we are allowed to use these calculators during testing and during the final exam. So you definitely want to use your tools to your advantage. And this entire section was just nothing about learning how to use that calculator. So that is the end of this video, and I will move on to the next section in the next video. Don't forget that after you watch this section, you go into the uh, corresponding homework assignment and try to get these 24 problems completed before moving on to the next lecture video.